Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Today on the show, Winter Wonderland. Yeah, hit us hard, second week in February. Sun's trying to peak out now, mid-afternoon. But we've had about uh, four or five, maybe as much as six inches of snow. But last weekend I noticed some growth in my cold frame. So we're gonna go check that out. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two shoots in here, so I'm probably gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the bay. We the trees and then we water as we need to. Try and get rid of those air pockets. We got the benches over there and all the pre bonsai but we gotta go check out the cabin. So let's get over there. All right. So last weekend, when I was checking into my cabin cold frame, I noticed my Japanese quince uh, were showing some budding. Uh, the smaller of the two had some uh, leaves that were already a quarter of inch or more grown. So now I don't want those to get damaged so I have a couple of choices to make. I can either keep them out here and make sure that the uh, temperature now doesn't go below freezing so those leaves don't die off and, 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 and just ruin the tree. Um, or I could bring it in my plant room and then it would grow really nicely for a couple of months but then I have to be very careful taking that thing back out in the springtime. But let's take a peek inside the cold frame first and kind of see where we're at a week later. He's looking awfully happy. So as we pull back here, got some trees that are doing fine. No real shoots going out. Got the azalea back there, looking pretty good. This big Japanese maple, taking all the room in here, seems to be fine. Another Japanese maple, no buds shooting yet. Then we get back up here to the top row, and I noticed back over here, what do we have there? Look at that. We have some green in the cold frame. Get that down into some light for you. Look at that, that's at least a half an inch of growth. We got some buds over here, a little bit of green starting at the tip here, some green back up over here, yeah. So what are we gonna do with that? Well, I think that one might come into the cold frame, or excuse me, I think that one might go into the plant room because those leaves are getting pretty big and I don't want them to die off. So here's the other one. There's my thermostat regulated heat source over there that's turning on the power so I don't get below 32 degrees. But look at the buds right there. It's my other Toyo Nishika. Or I saw a pronunciation or a spelling looked like Nishka. Uh, the Japanese quince. This thing's got all kinds of buds on it as well. So, and this one's in a great big pot I got at the auction last year through the Minnesota Bonsai Society. Actually a former member, young guy who was heading off to Australia, Sold a few things at the auction and this one didn't sell so he donated it to me said I could take care of it for him and see what could happen with the tree. So we're going to go ahead and repot that thing. Now for my research on the Japanese quince I have found that uh, some of the uh, information out there says that best time to repot the Japanese quince is summertime. So that would be perhaps after all the flowers have been uh, budded and maybe fallen off and it's a safe time to go ahead then and repot. Most of our trees we repot in the springtime and as early as February in Minnesota with our cold frames people are going to start to uh, take out some of their trees uh, likely the azaleas first and uh, do some repotting. So my azalea doesn't need repotting this spring so mine's just going to stay back in the cold frame. There we go. We got out of the cold frame. Let's bring it to the house. We 
we got the quince inside the plant room so now we have to take a peek at it and uh get into that soil and see what's going on with the roots and uh pick a pot for it and we're gonna see what uh what it's all about what it's got going on so i'm gonna use the gopro again get some super close shots we got those buds right there and i'm gonna use my phone for the other angles because my son needs his camera for school so we'll do the best with what we got again this is a Japanese quince and it's been out of the cold frame now for a couple of hours and it's uh, ready for me to get out of this uh, really big pot very nice uh, big training nursery style uh, square pot that's really nice and solid and uh, it comes with draining holes in the bottom so it drains real nice um, and uh, this is from a former Minnesota Bonsai Society member and he was going to Australia so we're gonna take care of his tree for him he was uh, gracious enough to donate it to uh, me to take care of and uh, see what we can do with it uh, it's a multi trunk style because I got all of these branches growing out from what we believe is the main trunk when this started here is a uh, big branch right here that was that was cut off that uh, was dead looked like maybe one of the early main branches you can see we got another little growth right there so that's coming in I don't know what this tree is gonna look like I'm kind of excited because I don't often get a tree that I didn't start or get at a nursery or when I do get a nursery tree I'm excited to see what's below. Now most of it is exposed up here, so I'm not going to be thinking there's any great big fancy root structure down below or a big trunk that we get to expose. But you just never know with a tree that you get from someone else or the nursery. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to dig right in. Because we got a lot of soil to get rid of. Now a lot of this is going to get rid of uh, pretty quickly just by me dumping it over. So it looks to be perhaps in this soil for a couple of years, unless it was really fine soil. It's uh, broken down a little bit. Got some fine particles in here for sure. A little more sandy soil. Looks like there's some bark in there. Really have to do a lot of massive sifting yet. I'm gonna have to dump this tray of dirt before I can finish the tree. So I'm just carefully, no idea what the root structure is gonna be like. This was a lot of soil for this tree. This is a little bit bigger pot than I would typically put it in, but it certainly provided a lot of room for growth. So that's not a bad thing. Nice room for growth. So I'm gonna dump my first load of soil here and then we'll be back. Got a lot of the first batch of soil out of there. And I don't know that this is if this is wired in or not. at the back got some root growth right through the right through the bottom there so that's gonna hold it in a little bit so I'll just go ahead give that a little scrape so there we go we got some we got some good root structure right through the grate I don't remember that when I picked it up last fall, so I don't know if that happened the moment I put it in my cold frame for a couple of days or weeks before it got super cold or what. So 
So there's the box with all the built-in holes. What a nice structure. What I would love to do with this is put a whole bunch of young trees in. Great drainage. They put the sheetrock drainage tape in there. So to prevent the smaller soil from going in, because this is a smaller soil. So I'm going to keep it in this tub for a little bit longer because I still have, I think, a lot of soil we're going to lose. We'll go ahead and see what this thing has to offer. This long piece of root here that's ramped around a little bit. So again, this is, looks like it was a finer soil probably to begin with unless it's been in here for an awful long time and broke down. However, for how loose it is, it seems to me that maybe it wasn't uh, in here for a great length of time. Now, I'm not going to get rid of all the existing dirt. I still see some nursery dirt here closer to the um, trunk. There's still some dirt dirt left, plus the soil the previous unary, uh, user owner used is what I'm trying to spit out. We're going to take a peek. I got some thicker roots I feel like I'm bumping into. I got some finer roots that have shown up here and there. You can see all the sheetrock uh, the sheetrock tape here got some uh, roots growing right through it so it makes it a little hard to pull through that but that's good that means the roots were growing through there and I've got roots that's awesome this is one of those repots in my plant room that is just gonna make a mess and I'll do some cleaning tonight so we're starting to see a little more of what this thing has to offer and it's a big chunk of something big chunk of roots um, I'm gonna do my best to not cut more than a fourth of these roots off um, looking into my Japanese quince notes and uh, looking at what some people have recommended I probably want to try to avoid cutting any more than 25% of these roots back for this this three pot right here and again, I'm not sure what the bottom's going to look like. I'm not going to try to completely bare root this tree. You can do that with uh, a lot of the maple trees. You can, and and many deciduous trees. You can bare root and have a lot of success with all your new soil. And then more of the pines and conifers, you gotta be careful with certain varieties not to completely bare root. Azaleas, I'm not bare rooting that one typically. Ooh, I just cracked something off there. I gotta be careful there. I got a couple of... Uh... So I have a really nice, what looks to be like a radial root pattern that's a couple of inches down from where, where these trees all start up here. There's a couple inches down and then all of a sudden there's these thicker roots and then some finer roots and it's just kind of a big root system. As you can see this tree right here, this, this might be able to be propagated into a brand new tree. So what I might find here in the course of re-rooting this tree is I still may have a clump style tree to have, which would be kind of an interesting toyo, <laughs> Japanese quince. Um, but then I also might be able to get a tree or two, at least this, this, and this, these two right here. I can see the roots growing right here and some finer roots. And if I were to pluck these off, I should be able to put those into some soil and maybe have some success with those as well and not have to keep this thing all one big giant a uh, massive tree with a, a whole bunch of it's almost like there was a whole bunch of little trees that were just thrown together in a pot 
And there's no real leader. There's no real central trunk except for this big thick one right here that's been kind of damaged and has some growth off to it. I want to make sure I keep this thing alive for its first year in a new soil situation and new, new to my backyard. Soon after I got this, it went into the uh, cold frame. All right, let's empty some more soil. I seem to have lost connection with my GoPro, so I'm down to my phone. So let's see if we can finish this with my phone. <clears throat> so I want to see if I can pull this guy right here. If I have a root system here with roots from this tree, I can find, or this, uh, this leader, if I can find where it's connected and just cut it off, I'm sure I could have success. This one seems a little bit more attached right now. I don't want to mess with that one, but I am going to try to get this one free first. And hope that I get an extra tree out of the deal. Nothing wrong with propagating your trees and working towards more opportunity to grow and learn. So I'm just moving back some dirt. Seeing where this is where this is going. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I will do my best to point it out. Right here underneath my thumb, I've got the main trunk right here that goes down here, but then it kind of goes into the dirt right there. I don't know where that's going. And there's another root here that's loose. I don't think it has anything to do with this one right here. And there's all kinds of good roots down here, all kinds of movement. And this tree's got enough roots where I think I could. So I'm gonna reach in there. I'm gonna go as far as I can go. I'm going to go right there. I don't want to go too far for fear of creating any more damage than I, 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 I... Okay, so this has some nice... This has a nice root that goes underneath there. So now I've got some roots there. And now I've got some roots there. Let's see what I can... other roots that are tangled up in here. So it, it seems to go even further down there, but I would have to cut that off anyway. So there we have it. Look at that movement, huh? Now I've got this, what would be considered an aerial root back here, if this was the soil down here. And I have this very very gnarly looking trunk right out of the get-go here with plenty of roots down here. Look at that to support myself. All right. So I either leave this on and put the soil line there or I take this off and start the tree below there. And I think I'm going to do that. I don't think this tree will work well with a root like that. So now I can set this off to the side and put that in another pot and I have another tree. A very, very interesting growing tree that uh, is going to grow up to the sun now after this interesting birth. <laughs> All right, so trim that off. Trim this little guy off, and we'll get that into some new soil in a little bit. And we do some more putzing with this guy. All right, so how exciting is that? I got another tree out of this big multi-clump tree, which means I have an extra Japanese quince that I can work on and grow into a really fun, hopefully, uh, bonsai. So as I tug on the branches here, I don't, I don't feel any other... 
place where I could possibly get another tree out of there. And as I told you earlier, you got this guy growing right there, which if that, if I bump that, if it falls off and it doesn't survive, I'm not going to lose sleep over that guy. Um, we want to keep this thing alive and get it in its next pot. So that's my next line of business. So we've got a couple roots there. I've got a root here. Just shooting straight up in the air. I'm not even sure what it's attached to at this point. Really gnarly root system. This thing was kind of bunched in there really, really a ton. I'm not going to need some of these extra dangling guys. So I'm just going to go ahead. So I have two pots here that I considered for this tree. And uh, I got the kind of tan looking one. Now I haven't seen this tree bloom yet. My, my quince that I have, that I can show you a picture of here, has kind of that pink and white flower. Um, this tree is noted for its ability to have three different colors in its uh, bloom. And so I don't know what kind of color I'm going to get from the flower, but I have this uh, pot, a little bit of a highlighted kind of burgundy color there, a very cracked looking chip on the top type looking pot. I have that one. And I have a burgundy pot which will look really good with these uh, really nice new leaves that are coming through. And the flowers will be white with some red on there, so this could really pull out the reds of the flowers should this one have a red uh, on there. Both are the same size. Don't want to leave the price tag on there, that's tacky, Dave. So both of these are the right size for me. I can fit it in there right now even if I trim a little bit more of the roots on there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a nice size pot to grow this, what may become a clump style bonsai um, in the coming years, which it looks to be that already. Again, I don't want to completely get too far in here on this repot, because it's the first time I'm seeing it. So I'll clean it up just a little bit more and I'll decide which pot I think looks the best according to those. So my biggest concern right here, for me right now, is I do want to see, you know, is this, how deep does this dirt go? What's underneath? And if I expose a little bit more, more root underneath here, will it show me where it, where it attaches to a trunk? And does it attach to a much bigger trunk that I'm just still not seeing? There's a little bit of thickness right in here that is supporting all this old growth. And so that could be the main trunk. There's a nice little piece of root right there as well. So I've got something big in here. So this is a very, very big, very gnarly bottom to this. I just don't know what it's going to look like in the end. There's a lot of roots here that wrapped around and started growing to one side or the other. This side looks a little dead over here, but then there's a live vein in there, it looks like. And there I've just exposed this brand new branch right there. That brand new one is what I first noticed, one of the first things I noticed out in the cold frame. And you can see there's another one right next to it that maybe tried to sprout. I'm just going to take that off right now because I've got plenty of branches on this tree for a multi-trunk. I don't need any more. I'll let that one grow because right now... I just want it to live. I want growth. I don't want to cut anything off yet until I see it in a pot, see how it's going to do this summer. This is so intriguing because right here, this root system here comes up and like swallows this tree bar, uh, uh, trunk. Like it just comes out of all this, but that's just dirty from all the soil it was tucked away in. If we bury this thing to here, this starts to open up and get exposed. It could show a really, you know, I, I can maybe poke through here at some point down the road in this tree and see all the way through. So like right there, I can see through this guy. So I'm going to putz for a few more minutes and then we'll get it into a pot. Give it a little bit of water here. If I can wash away some of the dirt that's around these root systems. I don't have a bucket of water right in front of me to uh, dunk this in and shake it off. Just 
very intrigued with how tangled this is. And how much of that do I want to expose and see that system? Again, the one I can see the most is right here. This, this, this root comes from this, some, these roots right here. All of these roots right here are coming up and feeding these back three trees. It's weird because the, you know, I'd want to cover that up probably. Or if it's a really gnarly trunk, this someday could be root over rock. I could see this becoming a very interesting root over rock if I can open up these roots more. I don't have the setup to do that today. So I, I'm just going to repot it in my pot that I choose and let it go for a couple of years. But maybe in two years from now, if a lot of these roots can be opened up and kind of separated to wrap around some big rock structure. This could be a really, really neat uh, tree over a rock or multiple rocks. And again, I got all these one, two, three, four roots here. I don't know if I want to keep all those long term. And if I get rid of them, which tree is going to die? Which one is that connected to? So it is quite a neat little puzzle. I know I don't really need this piece right here. I don't have any knob cutters. I know this one will cut right here. So I could chop away at that just a little bit. It's all dead. And I can go back and do this at a later time as well, when I get more growth, see what's gonna survive. But I might as well pretty it up a little bit while I can. Can So now it looks a little bit less like that tree trunk was growing there. Oop, I just created damage. So there I go. A little too aggressive right there. See that? That's what I get for trying too much. So this tree right here, I could try as a cutting, but this is where you keep practicing and you keep learning. So I can put that into a um, bit of soil and see if that has any way of uh, um, coming back. All that really does for me is let me uh, clean up some of this root structure and kind of find out where it goes. So not a huge loss in the end. Don't be afraid to tackle your trees, but just be careful. And hopefully that won't be anything major. And as, as you can see, I have I'm still a half a dozen branches, so we'll peek at them some more and put it in a pot and, and get that going. I am going to go with the burgundy pot. I've got my drain holes there, so we have to make some new drain plugs. So we're going to do that. So I've got my mesh. I'm going to go ahead and put it right over there and there. So I need some wire. I'm kind of a saver, so I save everything in my, my ice cream bucket in this case. And whenever I need some wire to put some uh, mesh on or whatever the case may be, I've got my wire. Now there are all kinds of methods to put in your mesh on. People make them look like staples. I just go with the width of my finger because the width of my finger is about the width of the hole. My finger almost fits through that hole. So if I bend my wire pretty tightly to my pointer finger right there, that about is going to be fitting through. The hole. That fit through the hole. The other one fit through the hole. So there we go. Fit through there real nice. So I can bring this back one over here. I can bring this one over here. The biggest thing you want to be careful with, with these wires on the bottom side here, would be scratching up any, any uh, nice stands you put your bones eye on. This might touch. Once all the dirt and stuff away, does it lay flat? And this one has a little bit of a wobble, so I want to make sure I make it as flat as possible. And you just want to be careful. Oh, I notice a crack at the bottom of this pot. That's never a good thing. Let's hope it lasts. It's a new pot to me. I think it was a 
discounted one in a, in a nursery store. So I also have the holes to put some wire in to tie this thing down. So I'm going to go with two pieces of wire, approximately the same size. It's going to come up and have to go around a little bit of tree trunk. So in the back, I can either go long to long or short to short. Depends upon how the root structure is. I might even want to go diagonally. Don't be afraid to be creative when you're tying your tree down. You want it to be tied down so it's protected. And uh, you, you, you can do it with whatever way works for you. It works for the pot that you're using. And again, in the end, I want this to be able to sit down. This pot has bowed the bottom and the middle here which means some moisture might even sit in there, so I have to be careful and keep an eye on this one. So I've got my wires in there, so it's ready for the tree. Now I have to decide where this tree is going to go. Not a lot of decision to be made here, only in the sense that I can't go further right or left too terribly much. Um, I don't want this branch probably coming right out to the viewer, so I thought I would turn it this way. And get these roots down here. This is a loose one right here. Again, I might be able to snip this from the main root and then there's this whole another tree right here. I have to be very careful not to kill the tree and get too much beyond. So I don't know if I should risk that or not right now. If I let it go too much, it'll eventually grow in together and be one big structure like these down in here someday. All of this is gonna be one big mesh and thick trunk because they'll all grow together over time. So if I'm going to separate these, the sooner probably the better. And again, this one, it's wobbling enough that leads me to believe I could maybe get in something in there and find out where else it attaches. Seems to attach to this root structure right here that goes to maybe this back right here. I could get a, if I could get a cutter in there, and just cut back there. Or even if I were just to take a knife and shove it in there and kind of cut it loose, I might be able to get this as another tree. So here's the tree I'm trying to release with a nice little pocket of roots down here and a lot of neat movement. And it's just hanging on. So I've got a little wood carving tool here I'm trying to not destroy too much of the roots around it, but still be able to kind of separate it with this sharp edge. I don't want to hurt too much of the future cambium layer of the tree when it grows. Look at that. I was able to stick the scissors right in there. And uh, I have half of the trunk just fine. And I have half of the trunk that has a little bit of a little damage right there. But for me, that's totally worth the risk. I'm going to see if this will grow as a tree. I'm going to put this in some soil and we'll get that growing. You never know what you're going to get into a tree. I love that. It's kind of cool. So now I can either keep this as my front or I can keep that as my front. This has a nice, this nice tree coming over here. This is a little invasive in our face right here, but I could cut this entire branch out and let the tree grow this way or just leave it for now because we want to make sure this thing stays alive. A lot of crazy tangles in this tree, which a lot of movement. No wires needed at the moment. So let's get some soil and put it in. Got my soil handy. One third Akadama, one third pumice, and one third lava rock. 
make my mound. I'm going to leave this as the front. All right. So we're going to secure it. Before we secure it, I was going to trim back maybe just a little bit more of the loose ones. So these will grow into bigger ones. They will spread out and ramify. So in this case, I went from front to front. I can connect these two first and then connect these back here and do the crisscross pattern. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm crisscrossing the front one back here to the back one. I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple of twists with the hand. Cut off the extra right away. Take a look at my tree again. Make sure it's leaning the way I want it to lean. And I want that one to, excuse my reach. I'm gonna lift up and twist this a little bit. Always lifting up and twisting. Make that a little bit tighter. All right. I think I'm going to bring this one. I think I'm going to bring this one also around the back. I can go through some roots here. I was able to go through some roots right there. Bring it way back down over here. Bring these two together. Cut off the extra. And then hold it, pull it, and twist it. So try not to be in your way too much here. Pull it, twist it. Got to be careful not to just twist, 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 twist with this aluminum wire. You're going to get some overlapping and bulging, and you can possibly then just break it and snap it right off. I've done it many times. Now when I lift up right here, it's pretty nice and snug. Tuck that wire down there, tuck that wire down in there. I am good and secure. Now I have a little bit of roots that want to come up here, so now I can go in here and maybe snip a couple of roots off. I think this one's just going to be up in my way. So I got rid of that guy. This also is one that's just super gnarly tangled. Losing that piece right there. I'm okay with. I've got a section right here that just tangles around each other. So got this big clumpy section right here that just they're just tangled up here. Tangled up mess. So I'm gonna go ahead. I just got the big gnarly part of that trunk gone and now I can just bury this with some with some soil. Get that going down. So let's do that. I wish I could go outside and just put this on the bench in the shade. But it's only February. Get this thing back in the cold frame. 
and then hope it doesn't leaf out too terribly much for the next couple of weeks. If it goes too crazy and I get too much leaves coming out, then I'm going to have to probably consider bringing it into my plant room. And then once the uh, spring has warmed up enough, acclimated into the outside world with just a little bit of sun at first, mostly shade, so I don't burn the leaves out because these are going to be nice and tender leaves in my plant room should I do that. But for today, I'm just going to poke all this soil down there, shake it on in there with the chopstick. Time to come in and water. I'm going to give it a good soaking so all the roots get all this warm bath. Room temperature to my cold, cold or my plant room rather. It's going to start to seep through here momentarily. There it goes. So I'm a little close with my camera angle here. I got some height to this tree that I could get rid of, um, and in fact I will. So this tree right here, this part of the branch just goes a little bit too high, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it right there. I've got this branch back here and all these buds that are shooting right here. I'm going to cut this one. That's a very weird growth pattern by this split right here, so I just cut that shorter. I'm going to cut that a little shorter. This one goes way out and wild and wacky. I don't know. I don't see a, I see buds, potential buds here. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. So there's my tree. Definitely an interesting bottom clump style tree that will turn into who knows what down the road. You never know what you're going to get. But right now I kind of have this, I'm, ab I'm above the camera angle here, but it just kind of curves just a little bit here from left to right. I got a little bit of negative space over here. Uh, who knows what will happen with this out here. This may go someday, it may be a really nice accentuated branch. This one has some stuff going all over the place. But we're just going to get this into the cold frame and call it a day. Hey everyone, I'm out at the cold frame. Since I don't want this Japanese quince to bud any further, I don't want any of these buds to go too crazy wild over the next several weeks, I'm going to keep it in my garage cold frame. My garage cold frame does not see the uh, sunshine like the cabin. The cabin has a couple of windows, so it's able to get more light. Um, and I'm assuming the difference between this year and last year is the amount of light that that cold frame is getting. And as our days get a little bit brighter in February, it's starting to get brighter and brighter for the trees, and they're like going, hey, when my temperature is between 35 and 40, there's movement in those roots a little bit, slightly, it wants to, and it just starts to kick into gear, and this year just seemed to be early. So I've got my tall section for tall trees with some of my Japanese maples back there, and uh, they look good, and there's no new buds on those. I got my cascading juniper back there, and my, my pine, another juniper, a couple of maple seedlings just from the backyard that I'm monkey with, and a couple of azaleas. So here's the new... Uh, Japanese quince sitting right in here just fits in there nicely and uh, it won't have access to the light So hopefully those buds will just kind of stay where they are and slowly do some uh, Incremental growth and not get too big too fast if it does we'll have to open up the cold frame take a peek a couple of my other varieties just sitting down in there So there you have it. Let's keep it in here and see how this works Gotta try it Dave's bonsai, uh, in the sense that I have 
a branch that splits into two shoots in here. So I'm probably gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the bay. We the trees and then we water as we need. 